Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before diesel Just got a uh, 150 Prado in 2011 with just over 150,000 Ks He's doing, he's actually a mechanic by trade He's doing his own sort of servicing and that um, He just wants me to do the time about one of the It's not that much of a big thing, but one of the bigger things I suppose we call it big because, or people call it big because It'll be big if you get it a tooth out or get it wrong or forget something, get distracted crank the engine or something while the belt's off or whatever the case may be, right? It has happened to people, I do get those calls. Um, so look, it is pretty straightforward, um, and I'm not sure if we've got a detailed video in the VIP group or not, but um, just wanted to quickly run through a few basics. Not really how to, how to do the belt, more so what we recommend to do, and that is at 160 the coolant's due also, right? So. It would be wise to combine the timing belt and the coolant replacement job together. That way you can drop this coolant tank, the fan and fan shroud out of the way and give yourself a lot more room to get into the timing belt. Because to do just the timing belt with that coolant tank there, it is the hard way. Um, I've got pretty big solid arms, you know, like rocks. Oh, it look like rocks, but anyway, they don't fit in too well. And um, But we're going to make it happen. So we call it the hard way. We're going to do the timing belt. I'll, I'll try and... Do another video that actually I'll show you what I can on this one doing it the hard way and we'll have a more detailed video um, in the VIP group if we haven't already we've definitely got a lot of injector replacement videos in there got a few bits and pieces it's been a while since I've done anything timing belt wise I'm not sure how much detail we've got on replacing the timing belt there is a couple I've got on YouTube um, showing you the marks the important parts anyway so just take care make sure you get that right and we're going to get on with this and do a timing belt the hard way. I'll just sort of mention, you know, normally we do the whole front, you know, we call it the big front engine job. Um, the timing belt, the idler, the tensioner, the cam seal, if it's leaking, if it's not leaking, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But we supply that cam seal and our kits, because we do supply a kit for this. Um, we supply the cam seal because if you get it all apart and you see that it's leaking, there's no point not having that seal. Also the water pump, while you've got the coolant out and everything out of the way, it's wise to just do it as prevention because most of them all leak in the end. Um, usually probably sooner rather than later. Most commonly probably between 150 and 200,000 Ks. And our kit also comes with this drive belt and the bearings, so you can replace those bearings. They get a bit noisy. They have let a few people down, not the belt, the lower bearings, the main one, the top ones just get noisy. And the belt stretches. We think it's a great time to change it all at the same time at 150 that's a long time and you want it, this is like eight years old this vehicle and you want it to last another eight years so that's our recommendation but look we're not fussed what you do and what you don't do um it's you know whatever you want anyway guys um just giving you advice your choice which way you want to go with it have a nice day see ya hey guys this is a 150 prado and this is a video on doing a timing belt the hard way, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do it the hard way. When I say the hard way, it's not the big front engine job where you pull the coolant tank off and do the coolant at the same time, which you should be doing, really, in my opinion, obviously, which is 10 kilometers different, 10,000 k's different to Toyota. So the first thing we're doing is removing the coolant temperature sensor plug and the wiring loom there, if we can get it to release. Happy days, tuck that over there out the way. Now it is, you're not gonna see the difficulty and look, if you've got small arms and whatever, you'll probably make it look easier. But let's see how we go, all right. Gonna get the quarter drive and the 10 mil, start with the easy ones at the top and get the six bolts out of the timing cover first. Now we need to be able to get down to the crankshaft with it. It's a 22 mil socket. Okay. To turn, to align the timing marks, etc. So I don't usually do it like this. This guy is on a bit of a tighter budget at the moment. And um, that's how he's sort of chosen to do it. I get he's got it. He's got his wedding coming up and all the associated costs with that. So we know what weddings are like. Because that's a whoops. Drop bolts. I don't do that. Weddings there are a rip-off scheme, aren't they? Big rip-off scheme. But anyway, that's another subject. Let's not talk about that. Let's get this bolt back. Got him. Okay. the 
bolts on the bench. Hopefully we won't drop them. Um, geez, I'd love to. So, you know, can you see the picture of these? We've got the, radio, we've got the heater hose and the radiator hose. The heater hose I'd normally leave there, this one. But this top radiator hose would also normally be out of the way. Um, it's just really difficult. I'm just going to the second one down under the heater hose. This is what I haven't done it this way for a long time. I have done it this way before years ago. I remember it being difficulty. Difficult. <laughs> difficulty. Yep. Um, I remember it being difficult to get to all of these. And some guys will be sitting there going, ah, I did it that way, piece of cake. And you know what? Good luck to you, you know. Um, look, if you've got smaller arms and fingers and whatever, um, Oh, that's another bolt out, I'll go put that on the bench. If you've got small arms and small fingers and whatever, you could probably get in there a bit better. And you're going to go for the second one down here. Not too bad to get to. Let's crack it loose with a ratchet and then use the uh, quarter driver. Yeah, fan shroud. I'm just having trouble getting... Like I said, I can't bend my wrist backwards the wrong way, unfortunately. Look, you know, you could take the bash plate off and get to the bottom bolts from underneath, I guess. You know, there's different ways to do There's a lot of different ways to do things, so it's whatever's easier for you, you know. Some people to do the suction control valve go in from the side from the wheel arch. To be honest, I've never tried it. I don't have an issue doing it from up top, but I'm not saying one way's right or wrong or whatever. Mate, I haven't even read the workshop manual on how to do it. I've always just done it. I'm going to get myself a special stepping up tool. So I don't know what you're going to see here. I'm just going to go step by step through what, how I'm doing. So I've got the top four bolts out. So now I'm reaching, trying to reach down to the lower one. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to that. with it Because on the 120s and the Hiluxes with the top man intercool, you haven't got this big... Um, massive big intercooler hose in the way that's not fun at all to get to so what i'm going to do i'm going to slip that intercooler hose off i don't know if that's going to help remembering that's sharp on the alloy part some could be rubbing against that that could be not ideal um yeah i'm going to do it anyway what i'm going to take off you can you know what, i'll adjust the camera a little bit i don't know what you can see but anyway I'm going to take off this little bracket on the side of the, uh, the vacuum line. Take that little bracket off. But, you know, it'll pay just to take this whole pipe off, actually, so that's what we're going to do. So you know what I mean? You know, you don't take that off and then you take this off. You just create more work somewhere else that this works is of no benefit, where if we took all that off, we get to change the coolant. Whatever, I don't know. Um, I only agreed to do this because yeah, I sort of felt for the guys on a budget, so fair enough. Good on you. You've got to do what you got to do. So that's what we're doing here. Good one. It's been over tightened, so the whole screw came out of the clamp instead of the clamp I'm doing. So now I'm putting it back in. Now what we're going to do when we undo it to overcome that is just keep more pressure on it as we're undoing it so that it does the worm drive and undoes the clamp instead of the whole bolt coming out for whatever reason. I'll have to keep a lot of pressure on it as soon as I uh, stop doing that. It wants to come back out, so that's good. We've undone that clamp. Jeez, that clamp stuck to the hose pretty well. Man, I think that was tight. Someone glue this one on. There's no end to the thing, you see. Anyway, I'm going to undo that plug up there. Take this, you know, again, more clips and plugs and whatever. Doing the timing belt the hard way. Okay, so the clip sensor, of course, we're going to have to take this. Again, just taking the care to release the clips so that they come out. Not busting them. Of course, we're going to have to take the vacuum line off the bottom of the map sensor. Wrong tool. We'll get the flat blade for that. I thought we'd try it in case it was loose. But... Yeah, so this is the uh, 
not fun way to do the timing belt. Okay, so that vacuum wires off now. We just got the two mounting bolts. Two 12 mils. Hopefully we don't get interrupted by a phone call. We had a bit of a run this morning. I reckon we've got a bit of a quieter time at the moment, maybe. Okay, now we're gonna do those clamps. What was the thing? Undo one end of that at least. That came undone well, that was good. This one's stuck better than usual. How about that one up there too? Interesting, both ends of that stuff. A lot more than they normally are. It's been a bit like that lately with videos. Um, where, uh, you know, things are just different to what they normally are. Gross, that is. Stuck as anything. I don't get that. Interesting. Someone's glued it on. What happened to all the oil that's meant to be in here that keeps it all wet? Let's see how that goes. Crazy. Sometimes a wiggle's a good way too, that starts loosening up. Here we go, we get that out of the way. So we're just going to um, give that a bit of a wipe and leave that rag stuffed in it actually. Make sure nothing ends up down there by accident. And I reckon now, because we can push that out the way, it gives us a bit more room to get down there. Not a lot, but yeah, we've got, we can squash that hose out the way, you know, manipulate it as required sort of thing. Okay, let's roll on with that and see what happens. Um, okay, down to the bottom. Where are you? Can't even see the bolt at the moment. Seeing's overrated, apparently. We'll just feel it. Okay, so it's cracked loose. I'm just going to take the ratchet off. Feel that again with cold hands. I think we're on it. I'm turning and I'm on something that feels like a bolt using the force. Okay, I reckon that might be. I'm going to spin it a bit more to be sure to be sure, but I reckon that bolt's actually out, ready for me to drop it into the bash plate. So I've got to pull the bash plate off anyway. There it is, got it. So that's five out. We've just got the bottom one at the left side to get the cover off. And we're going to get in from the same direction with the arm down that way. We're working over in towards the fan. I'm actually going to move the light a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. So I don't know what that's going to do for you, but I wouldn't mind seeing what I'm doing. So. There you go. Yeah, really hard to get to this one because the fan's really in the way. But, and you can't, sort of, you're one-handed. You can't get your right hand down in there to help because, you know, you've got the whole fan, water pump, fan hub thing in the way. So, nasty. Yeah, hard to get it with that hand. I'm going to move myself around to the side of the vehicle. And then try the left hand. So right hand leaning on the 
bracket there, which you right down, that's a bit of a pain as well, but the left hand might do the job, I think. We'll see. I need a shorter extension. Okay, I've cracked it loose. So, you know, if you're doing this job trying to do it the hard way, have fun with that. If you're laughing, going, what are you doing that for, you? Fool, you fool, what did you do that for? Um, you can have a giggle, but look, if you're doing it the hard way, this is what I'm doing to sort of make it easier. Take that off, it's definitely made it easier at the moment because my arm's straight down through that gap and the intercooler hose. And there's the last bolt, happy days, right? The intercooler hose just pushes back out the way, so there is a pathway through there. It is a bit fiddly, but that was left arm from the passenger side of the car to get that out. Okay, slide out of your way again. So now, should be able to get this timing cover out, I hope. There we go, that's out, so. What I want to do is go and give that a wash. Look, I wash this whole thing down, to be honest, normally, while it's all apart. Um, this is an on-road, which is, it is pretty filthy. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay, so let's get the light a bit closer. Get the light right down in there if we can. Let's see if that works. Is it going to sit there? Yeah. Okay. So, look, you can see this is on road. I'll show you the vehicle roughly. I mean, bull bar. You know, there it is. No bull bar or anything like that. No. Right. It's, you know, it's got road tyres. Whatever, you know, touring vehicle, it's got a roof rack, light bar and awning, and a bit of touring, but I wouldn't say that it sees much off-road and pretty standard, this is what they look like in there. You can see all the dirt and dust, and see all the dirt and the dust in that idler there. So that's done 150 odd thousand pounds. Do you trust that bearing to last another 150? I say replace it, you know. You know what? I'm not doing a timing belt anymore. Not that I do many anyway, but years ago you probably would have conned me into doing a cheapskate timing belt. I really don't think you got to get me to do a timing belt without an idler and a tensioner. It's a bit of a no-brainer. Look, ballpark, they're about a hundred bucks each, genuine parts. For that sort of money, for 150,000 Ks, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? So look, um, that's what's going on. So what we've got to do now is, we've got to line up our timing marks. So, let's reorganise this little tripod. And uh, try and sit in a position where you can at least see something. You're not going to see much from there. But... Can you stay there? I don't know if it's going to stay there. Bit dodgy. Uh, this is where you can stop and edit and whatever, but we're just doing it live. It's just what it is, you know? So, Show you reality, how things really are. No smoke and mirrors, you know, other people want to do smoke and mirrors. Now we can do a bit of editing to, you know, make it a bit shorter and get rid of the crap. So you can see the mark, there's a little divot there. It's actually got a bit of blue on it, which I'll see on some of those. I'll actually do that. Um, not sure that anyone else does it or whatever, but maybe they do. Or well, that could be factory blue as well for that matter. I don't know. It looks pretty original. There's no reason why this would have been pulled apart. So... What we'll do, we'll line it up and we'll get it apart first and then I'll stop the video maybe while I go and clean it. Or you can go and get it. I'll let you know when I'm cleaning. You can go get a cup of coffee or a, a water or whatever you're doing or some more popcorn. And um, so yeah, 22 mil on a ratchet. I've got the trusty old Sid Chrome one. It's about 30 years old. Look at that rusty old thing, eh? They got a new handle put on it under warranty about 25 years ago. A new guts put into it. Right, new internals. But yeah, it's a very old one, eh? Anyway, had a few of those. I had some spares, but in the end I, I don't know, sold them or gave them away or whatever happened because I figured this one's just lasting forever. Now bring that uh, step back down from the side. To the front here and using the right arm 
I'm going to reach down and carefully try and get this ratchet and 22 mil on the crankshaft bolt which it went straight on that was beautiful so that's the good news now we're going to turn the engine over Look, I prefer to go clockwise because you know we don't want to um, have Look, it's 300 odd newton meters that crankshaft bolt, but I'd rather just go clockwise anyway, so that's what I'm going to do. So, just to make it harder for myself, I could have gone backwards, but just a habit, a good habit, I think, with some things that you just go keep it tight and go clockwise. Make a bit of work for myself though, because these, funnily enough, when you switch them off, they do end up usually pretty close to top. To the right spot so we're getting there so for those that are wondering you know the engine would run with the timing cover off so the cover doesn't do anything to keep it on or anything like that to retain it it's just there to keep the dust out and obviously it doesn't work too well for that either as you can see so when you do this job I suggest you give it a good clean up some people just use compressed air and, you know, it's up to you what you want to do, whether you want it clean or whether you want it blown dry or whether you want to wash it down. I wash them down with degreaser. And like I said, the more you do, the more time it takes, the more it costs. You know, you can cut corners and slip the belt off and slip it back on and out the door or you can unbolt the... Oh, unbolt the uh, either and the tensioner. So we're coming pretty close to that mark. I'm going to show you these marks pretty clearly, right? That's the idea of this video. Right, so I'm going to leave that ratchet on because I don't believe it's in the way at the moment. Don't forget to take it off though. Let's talk about these marks. There's only two marks you've got to look at. So you've got at the top there. How good's this, eh? Who's giving this information? Real information. No smoke and mirrors. There you go. There's the timing mark. You can see the little divot in the pulley on the front of the camshaft. Follow that tooth through to the back. Right, same tooth. There it is. And see the little arrow? You can paint that blue as well if you like. That's what I do sometimes. I'll give that a clean. I've got a little blue paint pen. You can paint it blue. I'm not going to do it because I know where the marks are, but look. It's good for sometimes for videos and photos to show you a bit easier, but we're pretty clear here what's going on, right? Directly to the top. And once you've done that, the other mark which is down on the supply pump, which is very difficult to see, but look, let's try this, all right? Uh, I'm going to need to bring the light down here somewhere. Probably drop it down into the fan shroud or something. One thing I'm going to have to do is put the light there. So hopefully that's not in the way of anything. I'm just going to put you there, just wait there for a sec, I'm going to get a mirror. Because you can look down, but you're always going to be, you're going to be looking, if you're looking down, you're going to be looking on an angle. So I prefer to get the mirror down there, put the mirror in place. Hopefully, it all focuses and works. Now let me get the picture. It is going to be hard for you to see. But if you look down there, yeah, quite difficult to get everything in the right position. Let me just, one thing at a time. Well, there we go. There it is. I can see it. So hopefully you can see it. Okay. Let's go on there. So, look, I'll, I'll describe it. Might be better. Look, if you can see in the picture what I'm talking, I'll describe it first. There it is. All right. Here you can't see the mirror. Okay, there it is, on the t right on the top edge of the mirror, the arrow and the little divot and the blue mark. Try and hold it still. What can I do? What can I do to get a bit more angle on that? If I go that way, I'm losing it. Hang on. Okay, so... On the right-hand side of that pulley that's on the supply pump, that's what that is, you've got a little divot in the back of the pulley, right? And there's a little arrow, the alloy you can see, right? Really struggling to show you in the picture. You know what? I'm going to reach down there. I'm going to try and reach down there. Right? You may have seen it. You may know what I'm talking about anyway. But we're doing this for people that don't know. And to be sure, to be sure, you know what I mean? Not a maybe. 
I definitely yep got that hundred percent. So I'll get it down there. We'll make sure. I don't know which way it's going to be facing upside down. You might have to turn your monitor upside down or something. I don't know. But we'll get it down there one way or the other. Maybe. Struggling at the moment. Okay, where are we? Now I can't see what we're looking at. It's pretty close. There you go. I think you can see a fair bit. Look at that, eh? So that alloy arrow in the casting and then the little divot in the back and they put a blue mark they should put the blue mark all right guys sorry about that um phone call cut off the video i don't know i haven't, I haven't actually figured i'm sure there's a setting there that i can stop that from happening but anyway um i hope you get the picture all right so that's the marks we just went through it the mark is line up that divot so look what i do i just put a, a mirror down it's always going to be lined up it can't be wrong if you've got the top one right it can't be wrong right if you have not pulled it apart then it can't be wrong. If you've taken the belt off before you've done this, don't try and line it up, put the belt back on, and then line it up and take the belt off. It's your best belt. I've had people call me, There is this does go pear-shaped, that's why we're trying to do a video that's really clear on what you need to do. Line this up before you undo anything, okay? Right, so top mark, check the bottom marks right, happy days. The bottom mark's more about we want to double check it after we've put the new belt on because obviously, it's going to be catastrophic if there's a mistake. Um, it's going to be a big, big drama, mate. You know, a new engine, whatever, or head coming off, bent valves, whatever. Seen and heard it all before, so you know we, you don't want to be going there. You, you'll be the first, last DIY, whatever. All right, let me see. And some people are sitting back there. <laughs> you know, oh, I hope they all stuff it up. You know, whatever. That's what some people are like. Uh, and all the best to them. Okay, is that going to stay there? I'm just a bit of a test, or I don't know. It's, no, it's going to go. Jeez, I think I need to invest in a new tripod. Oh, actually, I did. I invested in two more. So, things are about to get better, guys. We're always going to get better at it. Let's see if that sits there. Okay, so everything's lined up. Happy days. We're going to move our mirror out of the way. Anything we don't need out of the way. Plenty of bench space. Now, what we need to do is remove the tensioner. Okay. So... Two 10 mil bolts down on the tensioner. So, again, I might reach through the same way as I did before. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Can you see? Uh, look, I'm, you can almost see. Look, I'll bring the light a bit closer. I don't know if that helps you, but it helps me. Look, you don't need to see it. It's close enough, actually. There's that ratchet in the way. I'm going to take that ratchet off. All right, for now, because it isn't proving to be in the way. So the ratchet with the 22 mil coming off. Over the bench. So the people that go, oh yeah, easiest time belt ever, 10 minutes. Well, that's rubbish. All right. I'm just on these two 10 mils on the tensioner. One's cracked loose. Doesn't really matter which one you do first. I've done it either just to see and, you know, whatever. So I've cracked them both loose. Personally, what am I going to do? I'm going to take the top one out first. Because it's one that you can't see. If you can see where I'm... I don't know what's in the video if you can see what I'm doing, but it'd be close. Just got that coolant tank in the way. Look, I've got another one of these to do on a Hilux this way, funnily enough. Two in a row, the dodgy way, the hard way. Uh, we've got two in a row to do. Uh, this is a Prado 150. I'll do another video on the Prado, uh, on the uh, Hilux to show you if it's a bit easier or a bit harder, what the differences are. You can't have too many videos, can you? You're better watching the one that suits your exact vehicle, so then there's no... It's all right for me, because I see all the different options. You know, for you, it's like, well, you're only seeing one, and, you know, one little thing that's a bit different can be enough to get you confused. So, anyway, one bolt coming out now. I'm going to lose it. I'm just going to grab that. Okay, so this is what they look like. There's two of them. All right. There's one out. It's going to the bench. And now the bottom one, which was already cracked loose. We're just going to work that slowly. And that's all we can do, work it slowly. We've got a fan in the way, as I said. It's a real pain doing it this way. So much easier to... It might be more work, but it's better for the vehicle. It's better for the person doing the work. 
um, probably less chance you're going to mark it up as well because you can see more of what's going on. Anyway, whatever. So, slowly flicking that quarter drive ratchet. Got to say, that's another quality tool. So, we've got a Sid Chrome single hex 10mm socket, which I actually found in a driveway of a workshop. When I was there, I went, geez, where'd this one come from? No, nobody owned up to it, so that was good. A King Chrome extension and the Sid Chrome little uh, ratchet again. That must be 25 years old as well. All very old tools, a lot of these. Got some newer tools, but you know, my 3 8 Sid Chrome ratchet, which is the same as the half inch one, I think the handle was broken off about 20 years ago and could, could have still, still, it's a lifetime warranty, still can get that replaced actually, but they'd probably just replace the whole ratchet with some crappy ratchet and you wouldn't get the old one back, so I think I'll keep it. So I've got that last bolt out. There it is. Well, you didn't see anything, but it doesn't matter, you saw the other one, they look the same. And the tensioner, so we're just going to back off a little bit now and give you a bit more viewing room hopefully, I don't know if that works out, but whatever, it's so insecure this setup, anyway, there's the tensioner, NTN is the brand, uh, probably not too bad, um, we're going to get the belt off, so whichever way you like, just slip it off, off the uh, tops to go because the bottom's got a sort of an edge on the outside of it. I'll show you a bit of a technique for putting it back together as well. So there's the belt off that goes. That's rubbish. 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 That is rubbish. Okay. Yeah, this is where you don't want. You know, you should disconnect your battery when you do these sort of jobs, or and if you choose not to, that's up to you. You don't want your kids playing in the car pressing buttons because it's where it all goes pear shaped. So. We got that off, but we're going to replace the um, the idler. I'll show you what it looks like like that now. So we've got the tension out the way, the belt out the way. That idler there, it's held by a, it comes with a bracket usually, and it's got a 10 mil hex to undo that. So we're going to go ahead and undo that. You're not going to see that, like I said, positioning. It's just not happening, really. Maybe, actually, maybe. Leave it like that, see how that goes until it falls. If it falls, stand by. Right, I'm gonna grab the, these are pretty tight. The torque spec, I think, is 35. So, look, I'll be honest, I do all these by hand. And usually I check them. And I'm usually pretty well on, on the money. Bit of experience, you get to know a feel for everything. And, where it needs to be at. For you guys, I'd just always recommend use the torque wrench so then you know it has to be right in that position that's going to be a pain. Not going to get much swing off that. And because this hose, see what I mean about this doing it the hard way? But anyway, here we go. They tank in the way, so we bang into that as well. Not bad, but you know, things in the way doing the time about the hard way. So now we're undoing this idler. Now one of the really important things with this is there is a washer that goes behind it. Now obviously I don't have an issue with this but I heard from someone else and people tell you stories and they make it they try and make it sound like someone else sometimes. I note that with people they tell me these stories or they forget and they t it was them and then you kind of go oh did you do and they go oh no no that wasn't me that was you know if you make a mistake you make a mistake but look it's really important because they told me it, it, you know, it does damage. So, see that? There's a little washer that goes behind it, right? Don't lose that washer, right? You've got the washer. You've got the um, bolt, which you're going to reuse. You can replace it if you want. You know, they get a bit of wear on them. They're fine, right? This is the part you get to replace the tensioner. All you really need is that bearing. You can actually buy the pulley on its own. Let's have a listen to this one. I'll give it a spin. As I said, on rotor. It's covered in a bit of dust and that. Let's have a look, see what it is, right? See if you can hear it. It's dead set silent, right? There's no play, there's no noise. It's just covered in dust. You could probably put it back together reusing it. It'd probably be fine, but you know what? 
I'm not guaranteeing it for 150,000 Ks, and who is? Because new car parts get a 12 months, 20,000 warranty. So who's paying for your engine if it fails? That's what I want to know, just save 100 bucks. So not happening. Onto the bench she goes. All right, so that's your disassemble. I don't know what sort of time we're looking at with a bit of chit chat, but not too bad. And um, obviously we've got cleaning time, blow it dry, so cam seal's not leaking. It's all good. Um, so what I'm going to do is stop the video, put the light and the uh, camera on charge. I'm going to go and clean up these parts in the timing cover, so it's probably 15 minutes to get it clean and dry. Get the new parts out ready, so in about 20 minutes or half an hour or something, I'll come back to you, I'll have the new parts ready to go. Everything will be clean and we'll do the reassemble. Thanks guys. So tools for the job, all we've used so far is a half inch breaker bar, use the impact driver to zip a few things off to speed it up a bit, a 3.8 ratchet, a 12mm deep reach, 10mm hex on a, for the half inch drive on the breaker bar, a flat blade, a mirror, quarter drive with a short extension, 22mm on a half inch drive ratchet, a magnet to pick up a drop bolt and my special heater hose tool, clip remover tool. So that's all the tool we've used so far for this job, there's going to be more. Basically, the torque wrench is going to be the uh, other thing you need. Um, the old parts, obviously, you should have two bolts for the to mount the tensioner, six bolts for the timing belt cover. Like I said, don't forget that washer that goes under that bolt. We, we're going to give that a clean up yet. And of course, we've got the new parts here: the new timing belt, tensioner, and idler with the bracket. All right, guys. We'll get back on with getting it back together shortly. All right, so it's all cleaned up and washed down. You can see all nice and clean compared to before. Um, we've got our parts ready to go. So we're just gonna set this up for you so hopefully you can see something and run you through the reassembly procedure. How we do it, it's always worked for us. Never had an issue. But then, you know, as I say, what would we know? I'm sure there's people that know more. So, like always, you choose who you listen to. And, you know, you can see it. There it is, the words, the pictures, and you can see it happening. So, you can choose what you believe and what you don't believe. And what you think's right. This is just what we do. So, first thing that's going back on is the tensioner. So, brand new tensioner with the pin in it. If you're reusing it, you would care for it. Whoa, what was that? A bit of wind, you get that. We'd carefully um, put the hydraulic back in. Uh, never face it downwards, okay? Never face the hydraulic downwards, so it should be facing upwards. I think sideways is okay. The book says never face it downwards. I think that's when you're pushing it back in and do it slowly. Um, so my recommendation, just put a new one and you don't even have to worry about it. So let's not talk about pushing it back in. That'd be more, I suppose, if you made a boo-boo and you forgot something and you had to, uh, you know, do it again, sort of thing. So we're putting a bolt in the top hole, like so. See those doctor's hands at the Prado Hospital? That's the one. There's no need, you don't have to get dirty and whatever, you know. I suppose it depends what sort of work you do, but if you're doing heavy, you know, mechanical, full drive, suspension, grease, diffs, and whatever, you're going to get dirty. You are. But look, we, we don't really do that. Been there, done that. So it's more of a specialist fuel system area. And help you guys with uh, all the most common, the basics, you know, the servicing and whatever. Okay, now, so that's sitting in place. I'm just going to grab the got the quarter drive and the short extension and the bolt sitting in there for the uh, bottom bolt so just reaching down it's a bit of a feel thing all right because like I said everything being in the way and all you know doing it the hard way so you can't really see what I'm doing but I'll just talk you through it so the top bolts started and sitting in position the bottom one I'm 
just got the bolt through the actual tensioner now and I'm just trying to find the hole to get the thread started I think it's just started now so by hand I'm screwing that bottom bolt in now if you wash it down as I did just make sure you thoroughly wash any degreaser and whatever off and out of the threads and everything so that it's all bone dry give it time to dry up don't go putting degreaser in. look don't use oil based degreaser either you know I use that Kenko stuff the water based stuff don't leave it on there for too long I'll mix it probably about one third really gets everything off leaving it looking nice and clean just like a new one just like factory you know how it was in the first place so then we know it's going to last another 150,000 k's so just doing up those little 10 mils i believe the torque setting for those is 13 newton meters but always you can you don't have to rely on me you can you can go ahead and do that or you can just go ahead and check you know hit up google you know google's usually got most of your answers um I believe they're 13. Right, so at the moment, I'm going to give them a little nip with a quarter drive ratchet because I believe I know how to do 13 or a suitable torque setting thereabouts. And I will put the torque wrench on it afterwards to make sure it's not less than. I don't mind if I'm 14 or 15. The main thing is you don't bust the alloy or pull the threads out or whatever by being crazy over tightening them. Which is why, if that's you, you need to use a torque wrench. Now the other thing I think I'll mention, besides not forgetting that washer, with the bolt that goes through the idler, it's really good if it looks like that. But usually they get these wear marks on them, okay? Don't be scared of that, have a look at it, have a feel of it. It's still smooth, there's nothing on there. Give it a clean. I want these bolts clean and dry, no lubrication. Um, what's going to happen with lubrication I think the dust is just going to stick to it and um, could cause some issues a bit stiff moving around it needs to be able to move freely you know we like putting grease on things but this is one of those places I could be wrong again you know there's often people you know all the experts that do their online videos and posts and whatever there's a lot of experts and you know, there's always other experts that think um, those experts are wrong and, you know, you never really know who's right. So you've just got to look at the evidence and listen to all the experts and make up your own mind from what you see. And I'm sure that's what you do. I recommend. I'm just trying to get that. I've put the washer on the back. The new tension is down there. Just trying to get that bolt started. I think it's just started now. All right. So just doing up by hand at the moment. And that just sits on top of the tensioner so it's ready to go like I said I believe this one's 35 Newton meters um, if you watch this video and I've posted it in a link on FB feel free to put a reply I've checked the torque setting and yes it is or no it's not not for me for anyone else that's watching you know whoever does it or knows it 100% that wants to put their name to it then uh, you can save other people from having to look it up helping I like to see other people helping helping each other bit of a community thing helping each other out that's why we have groups so you know you can ask your questions in the groups you don't need to worry about you're gonna cop you know so we're just gonna give that a little nip for now it's 35 but that's good that's probably you know about 30 but you know Good enough for now. We're just going to check it all once the belt's on. We're going to check over all the bolts, right? I'm just going to give the um, outside of the brand new idler pulley that's clean a bit of a wipe just to make sure it's clean, no bits of grease or whatever. And that's why we like everything to be clean because, you know, if you get a lump of grease or something, to, look, this is all meant to be free of contamination, nice and clean, right? So there's no reason why our supply pump would have moved. We're not going to check that again. We can see our camshaft hasn't moved. There's no reason why that could have moved. Some engines, as soon as you let them go, they because of the lobes on the camshaft, they move. These are kind of pretty easy as far as that goes, but you can still get it wrong and it can still be your engine. So what we're going to do now is grab the belt from the bag. And what we're going to do, we're going to go and... Uh, we're going to go and write the sticker. So then the ink can dry, okay? Because the problem is you go to put on the time belt cover, which is easy to do when it's off, which we want to do that soon. So just give me a minute, I'm going to go and write down the
Okay, so that's over there drying. We've got the kilometres and the date that it was done sitting there. That's what you want. You want that stuck onto the cover while the cover's nice and clean. So we get the sticker out of the bag and fill that in first. Then you get your tying belt. Here you go. It's a nice new tying belt. See? Happy, happy, shiny, genuine parts. And have a look at that. Have the writing facing you. And you'll find one mark just to the left of the writing and one mark just to the right. Okay? That's the short side's going to be facing up. So if you have the writing facing you generally, this could be wrong. It's not always going to be the same. Next thing you know, they'll turn around. It can go either way technically, but the writing facing you, this is how I do it, right? I'm going to have to explain to you again because you're not going to be able to see it all. It's deep, deep down in the hard way of doing it. So sit the belt in place. However it sits down the bottom, don't worry about that. Get the top mark in line, right? So there you go, you can see. Oh no, you're not right in front of it, but believe me, it's sitting in the right spot now. While keeping your finger on that mark so it doesn't move, gently stretch the right hand side of the belt down so that the, the teeth at the bottom at the next mark is going to be lined up. Right? Now you're not going to get the belt on like this because there's a, an outer edge on that, the next pulley down. So what I've done is I just stretched the right hand side of the belt and sort of got it on just at the top. The bottom's not on. It's just where I'm holding the mark in the right spot. Now I haven't looked at the mark. I'm just guessing that's in the right spot by pulling that belt tight. Then what we do is we slip the top belt off while keeping your finger on that mark at the bottom so it doesn't look position right. So look, this belt at the top's floppy, but I've got my finger on the mark. Now I can slide it the rest of the way in without taking my finger off it. Right, then... Get the rest of the belt on the bottom underneath the pulley because that needs to go on first. Right now that's on. Okay, now while but not on the pull, not on the either pulley. Then while putting a little bit of pressure, upwards pressure, to keep that belt tight, I'm going to let go of the supply pump end, and I've just got this end now. Right, it's not on yet, but by keeping that tight, that should fall on in the right spot. Right, so keeping that tight, see like that. Just going to use my left hand and gently work my way. Don't force anything and damage the belt. Gently work my way around, and once it's it's pretty well on now, I can see the lines in the right spot. So, having that bit of tension down this side, I hope you follow what I said, right? So, get the top one, stretch that right side down there just a little bit so that you get it lined up because it's hard to. You can just put the bottom on and go, yep, it's right, and then pull, oh, yeah, no, I've got to move it one or whatever. This is the way I do it. It's really easy. It probably looks a little bit harder because we're running a video and you're in the way a bit and whatever. But And then just gently slide that back. And then, last but not least, you can sit the, the belt over the idler pulley. So what we've currently got is the top mark, you can see, spot on. Easy to see with a new belt. Blue mark at the front. Follow the two through. The mark's there. Even if the mark wasn't there, it didn't. It doesn't matter. As long as you, both your marks are lined up and this side here is tight, happy days. And that's what we've got. See, tight, no play. And the bottom mark, I haven't even looked at it, but it'll be right. That's what I'm about to look at before I pull the pin. I know it'll be right, but this is what I'm talking about, triple, double, checking things, whatever you want to call it, double, triple, quadruple. I don't really care. It's an engine, so we're going to check it, right? So that looks good down there. As I explained before, a bit hard to show you this, but I'll tell you what I'm doing now. I'm putting the light and the torch down to have a look at that mark that's much cleaner now. And I guarantee you it's spot on, the timing mark down there. So that's all good. Now we're going to do a visual on the belt and everything. And think what we did. We put those bolts in. We haven't talked to them yet. We can still get to those with the torque wrench. Happy days. The belt's tight down that side. Everything's lined up. Now what we're going to do is pull the pin on the grenade. Oh, you can see the tensioner down there, the new tensioner comes with, see that pin right in the middle of the picture now? We've got to pull that out. I'll see if I can, you can watch me do it, oh my god. With this, here we go, so we're going to get in there, hang on, we put the light in the way. It's not going to work that well, is it? Here we go. Okay, so we're just going to go like that, it's all good, and go. Just pull it, you know, boof, out she goes. You might want to save yourself one of those pins in case you ever need to do it again now. Again, just a visual. You can have a look and a feel underneath. Yep, that's good. On top, that's good. Belt, everything looks beautiful and clean, just like a new one. That's how we roll. Now, still important things to go, so don't, don't stop watching yet. 
please don't stop watching yet. I mean, up to you. You can stop watching if you want. But when you miss it, don't ring me and ask me. Sorry about that. That was their call. Someone called for the information regarding their injector kit purchase. There you go. Anyway, so if there's a couple of joins on, it was a phone call every time. I was going to try and do it, run it all in one. I figured you get boring while I was washing up and getting the new parts ready. I probably spent 20 minutes or so doing that. But anyway, this is where things can go wrong. So it's a bit of a warning as well. You know, if the kids come out and whatever, look, finish what you're doing to a point that you're not going to forget what you're doing because it is an engine if you get it wrong with a job. This is probably the most important job that it's an engine if you get it wrong. Okay, so now that we've got the belt on, we've done our little inspection, happy days, have a bit of a feel around. Yep, yep. I want to get that 22 mil on the ratchet again. This is what you should always do, you know. I mean, depending on what vehicle, what timing belt, some say you've got to turn. It used to be different tensioning systems instead of hydraulic. You used to have to turn it over and unlock that and relock that again and all this sort of thing. On these, it's hi it's hydraulic, so you don't really have to do anything. But what I like to do, and I recommend you do, it's your sort of backup plan in case, you know, something did go wrong. This engine isn't going to turn far if you've got it a tooth out or you've done something wrong. And I'm just trying to get the 22 mil back on the crankshaft. Sometimes it doesn't go on. You've got to turn the socket a couple of clicks at a time. There we go. Third time we're on. Yeah, can you see the video? You can see the mark. Look, I'm just going to turn it over a little bit. Not far because, you know, it's going to it's going to have stopped by there. If you're out, the piston will hit the valve, right? I've done that little bit of testing to go how far will it go. It doesn't go far at all. So if you're... I'll give you another tip while we're at it. If you decide your cam seal's leaking, that's in behind here. We supply that with our kit. Um... And you need to undo this bolt i suggest you crack that bolt loose while the belt's on so if you go oh yep it's dirty whatever it's leaking i'm going to change it crack that buff right while your belt's on because it is very difficult look there's some things on the camshaft you can take all you know risk of contamination here injectors take the cover if it's crazy you can try and hold it's about a 22 3 mil or something whatever on the camshaft trying to hold that while you're undoing this it's very difficult and it can move a little bit it's i wouldn't i don't recommend it my recommendation is leave the belt on while you're cracking this loose every time and same goes with any other bolts like the supply pump or whatever right you know you don't want to be hitting valves into pistons that's really important so anyway in this case we didn't undo that happy days we don't have to touch it we've turned it far enough to know look you know it's not hitting anything, you know, you can go a bit further if you want. Jeez, this engine's tight. That's good. Anyway, that's enough. We've gone that far. Yeah, it's not lined up anymore, but it doesn't matter, right? Job done. I reckon we're close enough to say we could end this video and just say whatever. You know, we'll roll with the punches if you like until, um, until the next call comes in and then we'll call them an end. So if we get cut off, that's what's happened. It's getting cut off at the next call if we don't make it to the usual. Thanks for watching. Da, 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 whatever we normally say, I'll just make it up as I go anyway. So, so now we're just going to get the torque wrench and just double check those three. So we need a 10mm text, 3 out drive. I said 35, you know, I could be wrong, but uh, I'm happy with that, so I'm using 35. And it's, it is going to be, and this is the other reason why uh, I probably don't normally use a torque wrench. I'm just doing it for you, really. I'd just be double checking it by hand normally at this point. I'm just doing it for you, but to point out that, see, you can't really, with a fan here in the way, it's quite difficult to get in to where we want to get to. All right, so there we are. We're in position there. Is it going to hit on anything? I don't know. Let's see what happens. Look, I can't even get the right. It's... It's dodgy, you know what I mean? So this really, you know, this is the hard way to do things. Yeah, it's all angled up and it's just gonna click without moving. So, look, that's not gonna work. We'll get the smaller one and try and get to the... already be on 13 funny that all right i'm just gonna go down here to these little suckers 
Okay, so that's good. That went like a smidgen. I'd say it was pretty well bang on, but anyway. Um, trying to find the other one now. I don't have to get my arm in the way. Sorry. And that one's, again, it went about. Yeah. Happy days. All right, so I'm just going to double check that other one by here. going to check it by here because you know a torque wrench might work if you've got it all pulled apart all right but this one yep that's fine happy days right. so you want to make sure that's right okay nothing else that's needs to be done it's all nice and clean new parts triple checked everything Now this timing cover, we don't scrub it. You saw how it was before, it was covered full of dust. Basically what we do is we spray the usual degreaser, the Kenko stuff, it works a treat, pressure wash it. If it doesn't come out with that, it's not coming out. Uh, we blow it dry, we leave it in the sun to dry the last little bit. And I'm gonna run some molly coat around the rubber seal. Simply because I've liked the stuff and it may help it may help you can't see what I'm doing I'm just putting a little bit of molly coat along that seal on the timing cover like I said it's not going to hurt and it may help stop a bit of dust coming in you don't want to use sealants and try and glue it on because then the next person is going to have a lot of trouble getting it off again you know you wouldn't do that to your enemy would you no, you don't have enemies, do you? That's right. Don't worry about enemies. If someone wants an enemy, just move on. So, just lightly putting some molly coat on that seal. Just makes it all feel nice and soft and lit because it's all dry and you know what I mean? It sits out a little bit maybe and it might help protect it a little bit, you know? Certainly not going to hurt it, right? So, all the coats on there. Now the ink's dry on our uh, timing belt sticker. So we will put our timing belt sticker on. A few different places you can put that. You can put it across the front if you like. I like to put it across kind of like on the top side, I'll put it on and then I'll show you anyway. This is why we do it earlier, so that we can obviously give it a good press on now so that it hopefully sticks well while it's clean, you know, sticks well and doesn't blow off. So that's where we're going to put it this time, right? So there it is. Oh, stickers on there. Just a bit of molly cake, can you see that? You know, just on, it's not going to focus that well, is it? Right. Anyway. That made it look pretty messy, but I don't really care. I'd rather have a bit there. It's not going to hurt anything. So, slip this cover down gently. Don't force it past anything and whatever, and then rip that seal out or something or damage it on the teeth. Just gently lower it down into position. And basically the opposite order of what we did before, except obviously we've put back together. first because the cleanest one goes to the top doesn't it right? that's why it's fine because it was at the top not getting sprayed in dirt and mud and whatever so I'm just going to get that started we're going to try to anyway yeah, struggling okay it's always sometimes easier to have your 
socket and ratchet there to not ratchet socket and extension like that to give you a bit of you know so you know what's when it's straight kind of thing to help guide it in and the second cleanest one we'll put in the second clean bolt spot well that's not going to work because i pushed the washer you got to push the washer back to the end of the bolt bit of a pain these washers anyway it's more of a started by hand thing but anyway that's all right started so obviously we're just going to put the other four bolts in and whatever but we're going to roll the video to the end and start the car we've got other videos on resetting the timing belt light as well on YouTube so we've got the the normal GXL dash the Kakadu or whatever it is there's a few different dashes so look I'll probably have to watch one of those videos to work out to do this one because believe it or not I quite often Look, I can sit there for five or ten minutes and bugger eyes around and figure it out, but sometimes it's easy just to have a look at a video and go, that's right, that's the one. Because they just change them a little bit between the models, you know? Whether it's got to be on trip A or trip B or odometer and how many seconds you've got to hold that before you press that and release that and press that again and you know what I mean? Which is fair enough. They want to make it a little bit, you know, if they make it a bit complicated, you might not do it. You might take it to them, you know? Come on, Bolt, get started. This Bolt doesn't want to get started. What's going on down there? Oh, yeah, there it is. Just needed a bit of a tweak. Move the cover a little bit. So, second one down on the right side. Just doing that by hand. Now we're going to get the second one down on the left side, hopefully. Jeez, that's going to be... I'll have to get up on this special step-up tool. get started like the other one doesn't want to get started probably the fact that my hands totally crushed and not uh, try to go in there with the right hand try that one if it's not working try something different still not getting started anyway but bloody come on so I've got to do two of these the hard way in a row and I reckon that'll be enough to remind me to not do it again get this one started and like there's no room to get in there and you know mess around it's just persist my recommendation don't do it the hard way do it what seems like the hard way it's actually the easy way as I said makes your vehicle more reliable because you're doing all the other essential parts <sighs> struggling to get that started what's going on you know Struggle. Why is that not getting started? Okay, we'll try. You know, if this pulley wasn't here, let's try twisting the hand around back that way and poking the tongue out to the right. Come on. I mean, you know, there's three bolts in there, so how how bad alignment could that cover be to the bolt that's underneath? It couldn't be that far out. I think it might have started then, but. Pretty sure that's started. I'm going to put the extension on it if I can. Get in there and yeah, we're in business with the second one down. Well, people have said it's not just me. If I say something in a video, often I'm repeating things that oh, I get told. If you know what I mean. I'm not I take that the wrong way. I mean, like you know, someone will say, "Oh no, just drop the extension into the bash plate." That's not cool. Oh, I need that. I'm going to be pulling the bash plate off at this point. Where is it? Let's see if this is one of those lucky ones. Where is it? Where is it? Can't see it at the moment. Fun and games. We'll have a look down here, see if we can see it. 
That's not handy at all. Not good. This could end the video. I don't normally drop tools, but yeah, people say, what I was about to say, people say, oh, geez, you make it look easy, and then they have a go at it, and they go, and they're cursing and carrying on. Fair enough. Hey, not that easy. So I just dropped a quarter drive. You know how small that is, a little quarter drive. So, you know, you got to allow back to this time for these things into the job, because it is part of the job, I suppose. And now I need to find it to be able to get it back out. And uh, I'm laying on the floor looking at the dash plate. Mm, it's not looking too promising. So, luckily we've got the car parked on the hoist area. And I think I'm going to put it up and have a look. On that note, end of video. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find that tool. I'm going to put the bottom two bolts in and I'm going to start the car. I'm going to reset the timing belt lot. Okay, guys, hope that's helped. That's your timing belt the hard way on a 150 Prado. See ya. All right, guys, so we retrieved our uh, 10 mil quarter drive short extension and socket that got stolen by the vehicle. And now we're going to, we've still got the bottom two bolts to put in the cover. I didn't say I was going to end it, but you know what? If you want it to end, it can end for you right now by you stop watching. But there could be something else important I say or do or show you before the end. So I figured, you know what? To be comprehensive, let's do it. So we are rolling. So I'm going down to the bottom right, trying to find the hole to put that bolt in right now. You probably can't see anything, but again, just telling you. Had a bit of trouble getting those started, so you know what? I could say I hope you do too, but no, I hope you don't. Usually they go all right, but as I've said a number of times, and I'm sure you probably get sick of me repeating myself, but that's what I do. I want to make sure you get the information, and I'm just going to keep repeating it in this video and other videos. All the important stuff, I'm going to just say it again and again. I don't want to get calls about the important stuff. Oh, you know, what do you do when, well, you know what? Watch the video, watch it again. You know what I mean? But look, it's just, it's very time consuming getting calls, covering things we've covered, you know? So please watch the videos. Watch the video, watch the videos. Now, how did I get this bottom left one? I can't, that's right, I've got to go out to the side, passenger side. The one at the bottom left, right hand on that bracket, left hand down through this hole over to that side. Happy days, that's actually quite easy. Pretty happy with that. Hopefully it gets started. Yep, yeah, it's already started. We're going in. So all the bolts are in, I believe. So we're going to get the ratchet. Like I said, you can have a look at that. It is very old, the old Sid Chrome. What is it? I don't know the number on it. There you go. 12905. There you go. Old one. I don't know if they look like that these days or whatever, but. I'd say top quality ratchet. I'm very happy with it. I'm going to go and do the bottom ones first. Get the hardest ones out of the way this time. So we're just going to nip those up. Again, from memory, I reckon they're meant to be, oh, it's around 8 or 9 or 10 newton metres, somewhere around then. Not much, you know. They're just, you don't want to pull those stud type things, what do you call them, out of the, um, out of the backing plate behind it, you know. It's, look, they're not going to come out just until they... Till they get, you know, till they get there and just a very light nip. You know, there is a lot of diesel engine vibration. You've got to make things aren't left too loose, as we've mentioned a few things in other videos. Right, just nicely. Okay, so we've done the second one up on the right side. Now we're doing the second one up on the left side, if I can find it. I'm sort of not in the best position, but it's going to work. There we go. This one, we've got the tank in the way. I'll get off the stand. We're done with that now. Okay, so just the top two. Okay, just nicely without overdoing anything. Okay, happy days, right? So that's all back together. Put your hand up if you want to see the engine start. Huh. Can't see you though. Look, 
if this gets posted on uh, Facebook and you watch this video this far to the end, you have done really awesomely. Pull that rag out of there. Uh, I'll just adjust the angle a bit more so you can see what's going on there. We're just putting the rest of this intake back together. So we'll sit that there where you can see what's going on. How many times have they have that twisted around? Anyway, it's important that they stay on there. It's even better if you zip tie it on or something so it stays there. Okay, so that one goes in there first. Just gently with everything. It'll all just happen if you do it gently, right? Grab the bolts for that. Yeah, if you watched it all the way to the end, then I've posted it somewhere on Facebook. Look, if, you, if you've watched it just because you're on YouTube, that's fine. But if you're on our Facebook groups, that allows you to be able to, you know, ask your questions. And that's where, look, I'll, I'll have a look at the comments every now and then. I haven't got time to answer comments everywhere, right? I'll have a look at the comments on YouTube every now and then. If there's something that isn't nice, we're just going to delete it and you. So, you know, whatever. It's just how it is. So, bear that in mind. But um, if you want to ask questions, as I've said before, do it on our Facebook groups. Even if, you know, I haven't posted one of the videos, hey, you can post a link and say, hey, on this video, at one point you say we'll do this. I'll go and have a look at it and whatever, you know, if you think, if you're not sure about something, something's not right, you know, let's straighten it out or, you know, if you want more of an explanation, I'll even make another video and reply to it. That's what I'm going to reply to. I'm going to reply to um, discussion on Facebook. Just tag me in there if you like. Um, but if I do drop the link for this and you watch it because of that and you get to the end here, you've done well. And so that we know who you are, get you to... Uh, Right, I put my hand up. That's what you, that'd be good if you wrote that. I put my hand up. All right, when you said, who wants to see the engine start? All right, we'll keep going until the engine starts because you're the people that wanted to see the engine start. So that's what we're going to do. Don't forget to plug the MAF, MAP, not MAF, MAP sensor back in nice and securely because they can come off if you're not careful. Okay, we've got to do up that clamp and this clamp, of course. I can't believe that didn't move, that clamp. That was so stuck to that hose. Normally they drop down every time. But anyway, whatever. It's all good. Probably before I get to do it up, it'll fall down or something. That doesn't seem like it's going to. Just make sure you've got that pulled up all the way. And it's a delicate balance doing it up the right amount. Obviously, you don't want it to blow off with turbo pressure, but you don't want to squash it up so much that it just flares out at the top and looks untidy, right? So... And if you don't do it enough, it will slip down. It's only going to slip down to the barb, but it will slip down. This 10 mil bolt back in the bracket for the vacuum line around this side. Same as if you're doing an EJR clean. Same bolt, you'll take that off and on. I believe we've got it all back together. Right. If you stay there, that'd be good. Right, give that a little nip as well. Okay, bingo, happy days, we've got to do up that clamp up the top there, got to zip that with the, uh, look you know, that must have been off before because I'm not really that happy with how it was sitting so I'm going to move it a little bit, happy days, alright so, just be careful using impact tools. As I've said before, I know the feel for what mine do and where they're at. Um, you may know yours, you may not. Don't just think you pull the trigger and that's it. You know, it really takes a bit of time to learn your tools and how much pressure they're putting on. Okay, so let's get you in a position so we can uh, pump this thing up. Hopefully this engine running what's going to happen did we forget anything live let's have a quick look okay covers in we did those six bolts we did take yes we have look here we go so that's why you check things we haven't plugged the coolant temperature sensor back on yet the car would have started i think it usually runs a bit crap when you forget that one i think i've left that off once or twice so it was a little bit hidden out of the way because we did tuck it out of the way so 
this side corner temperature sensor. This is doing it the hard way, right? So, okay, did we get that ratchet off? Let's make sure we got the ratchet and the 22 off the crankshaft. Yep, we sure did. That's clear, covers on. We double checked all those bolts, the marks were right. We turned the engine. We put this back on, plug, plug, clamp, plug, that clamp, that clamp, this vacuum line. We're good to go. So what I need to do is just drop this vehicle down a little bit more so that I can access it. So give me just a moment. We're gonna start the vehicle. Then we're gonna go inside and uh, reset the tolling belt light. Four diesel. We're going to see if we can figure out how to reset a towing belt light on a Prado 150, not a GXL, the one with a different dash, probably the altitude and kakadoos and stuff like that. All right, so as far as I know, we've got to have it on trip B, so we're going to hit the power button twice to get it all light up, and it's not on trip B, so we're going to press the odometer button until it goes to trip B and then turn it all off again. Okay, now I think we Hold, trying to hold that with one hand and this, we press the odometer button and turn the power on again. So press the power button twice and keep holding it. Reset, talking about maintenance data, something like that, I don't know. Release and press it again within five seconds. There it is, and there's your kilometers. Release and press it again. I reckon we've got to hold it for a few seconds and that might clear if that worked. If not, I'll be doing another video. No, that's it. Beautiful. So that's as easy as that. So now we can just turn the power off and we'll start the car and obviously it should be all clear. Let's just see what happens. Yep, no timing belt lights. So to run through that again, pretty straightforward. I can't show you again until I get another vehicle. We don't I suppose they don't see that many altitudes and kakadoos compared to the GXLs. We've got a video on YouTube, obviously, with the reset time belt light on the GXL. Um, and there's some other posts around. I think I did one on Oz Prado Crew, like this one. Um, it's more text. I've written the text and um, put a photo of this dash. And on YouTube, definitely the GXL one. So basically, you've got to have it on trip B. So whether you need to power it up to put it on trip B or you know it's on there, that's fine. Then starting with everything off, you hold the odometer button down, you turn the power on. So that's two pushes of the engine start stop switch um, and keep holding the odometer. I think you've got to hold it for about five seconds. Like I said, I'm just going off the top of my head and I just did it. So it's in the video, but you got to hold it for five. Then it'll say, you know, maintenance. And it did that thing where the bar went across. I think that counted five seconds for us. Release it and press it again pretty well straight away. I think it's got to be within five seconds. I just do it after about two seconds. Then you've got to hold it for approximately about another few or five seconds. And eventually it said, you know, it's cleared. So it was as simple as that. Hope that works for you. Hope that's helped. Have a nice day. See you guys.